Hey guys, I just wanted to take a second and talk about kind of a debate that's going on in the gun community right now, and that is, should regular everyday civilians be rocking plate carriers and wearing them around in the range and practicing? The answer to that is absolutely yes. If you are a gun owner in this country, you owe it to yourself to have the best gear and the best training that you can afford. So let's talk about plate carriers. A lot of people who say, hey, if you didn't serve in the military, if you're not a cop, you got no business owning a plate carrier and you look ridiculous at the range trying to do mag changes out of your plate carrier. To that I call bullshit, right? In this country, we, see, we feel relatively safe, but we don't have to have a very long memory to remember all the crap that went down uh, during the pandemic businesses, communities burnt to the ground and not a police officer in sight. Now that's not a rip on police officers, right? But maybe their administrators, they weren't able to be there to protect the homes and businesses. Let's think about Katrina, all the craziness that went down there, the riots and people will do crazy shit when their kids are starving to death. So think about a natural disaster in this country where we're out of power and water for three, for five days. People are gray neighbors for the first couple of days, but once their kids start getting hungry, once their kids start getting thirsty, the gloves come off and crazy things happen. So my advice to you as a gun community is quit judging other people. And instead of judging them, why don't you help them? Help other members of the community know what kind of gear to buy, help other members of the gun community know how to use the gear that they have. I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I roll with every day in my vehicle. It's easy to take in the house, it's easy to take out to the car. I use a Spirit of Systems plate carrier. Why do I use this plate carrier? Because it's small, it's unobtrusive, and combined with my Tackle Scorpion Gear plates, it's light. These plates are like 3.3 pounds. Super lightweight plates, because I gotta think, if we have some sort of natural disaster, there's no guarantee that the bridges or the roads are gonna be a condition to drive on. So I might be rucking it, right? So I want a plate carrier that I can manage. And on my plate carrier, I try to equip it with as many things as I can so I don't have to carry my plate carrier and four bags to go with it. On my plate carrier, I have a loadout of eight magazines, 240 rounds. I have two tourniquets and on the back, I have an individual first aid kit, right? So I can treat myself, my family, members of my community. Um, and I have that right on my plate here. So I throw that on, I've got a pretty good loadout, and I'm ready to cover some ground. What do I carry for a rifle? Well, I have an SBR, a Gen 1 Noveski, I love this lower. Um, and on my rifle, I keep it simple. First of all, I keep it light. This rifle comes in at about five and a half pounds. I have a really basic, very reliable flashlight. Just remember, just because your flashlight's bright, it's got to work. And it's got to work after a high round count. So um, if you go to wish.com and you get a 40 billion lumen light, and then the first time you shoot it, the diode breaks, you wasted your money. Buy a decent light, right? I have a muzzle device here that projects sound forward. I certainly could install one of my suppressors on here as well. But for my daily driver, I really don't want too many class three items at risk of losing if, if something was to happen. And, and God forbid I had to go to the grocery store and I had this secured in my vehicle and somebody broke in and stole it. So I try to keep that to a minimum. I got a decent forward grip. I have a decent trigger, a decent safety. This rifle is built for reliability. And I didn't just put it together and throw it in my car. I put it together and I went around a butt ton of rounds through it to make sure it will run reliably and make sure it will run any ammo I stick in it. And that's a key, reliability, right? Make sure whatever you build or whatever rifle you have, you can put steel case ammo, you can put XM193, you can put Whatever they make in 556 or 223 will cycle through your gun because you not, might not always be shooting your match ammo. You might be picking ammo up off the street and shoving it in your gun and you want to know it's gonna run. So that's important. Keep your rifle light. 
also in this bag. This is a gray man bag and I carry this with my play carrier. I carry it in and out of the house every day. I take it to work with me. And luckily when I'm on the range, it's no big deal, right? And I own a pawn shop, so I bring it right in here to work. It's No one's freaking out. If you have a vehicle and you're gonna leave it in your vehicle, make sure it's very well secured. I also carry a sling. So under the premise that I'm 20 miles away from home, the roads and the bridges are out, there's been a major natural disaster and I need to get home to my people I might not want to be hanging on to this rifle every step of the way. I might want to use my shoulders and back to help support the weight. So I always have a sling with me. I like the Blue Force gear slings. They're light, they're bulletproof, and I've always used them and I really like them. There's probably some other really good stuff out there. That's just what I use. Um, I love this Gray Man bag. It's got lots of pockets. In this bag, I have another 200 rounds of ammunition. I have a life straw. I have scissors, and of course I've got, I always carry a knife on me, so I've got my knife. I've got another 200 rounds of ammunition. So my total loadout is about 500 rounds of ammunition available to me, loaded in magazines, ready to go. My optic is a Trichicon MRO. I love the MRO because of its durability, its reliability. It is a battery powered device, so I always carry a few extra batteries in the dangler pouch on my plate carrier. Um, this isn't the one I use for work when I do training, at shaw shooting. It's uh, my secondary one, but I make sure both plate carriers are equally equipped. I make sure my mag pouches are in exactly the same spot so that when I train on the range, it'll be a natural fit. When I put this on, everything's gonna be in the same spot that I'm used to doing. I will tell you that also for your grip and your trigger. If you have multiple ARs, if you have multiple uppers, make sure they are equipped similar, similarly. So if you have to go to that, you're not trying to have to remember, is that a 45 degree safety or a 90 degree safety? Is that a single stage trigger or is that a double stage trigger? Two stage trigger. Make sure that they are set up the same way so you don't have to get creative and try to figure it out in a high stress panic situation. It's equipped the same as your other one and it's always gonna work the same way every time. There are no guarantees in this life. We certainly live a relatively zen lifestyle in America. Um, there are some high crime areas and there's some pretty stressful situations that happen. But the old scout motto, be prepared, it applies. Prepare yourself. Don't be a gun snob, don't be an asshole. If someone wants to wear a plate carrier to the range and they're trying to figure out how to use it, why don't you go over and, and ask them about their gear, maybe give them some advice. and and offer them some techniques. Say, hey, this is the proper way to remove that magazine from your uh, magazine pouch. This is the proper way to bring your rifle into the workspace. This is the proper way to seat your magazine and tug. And this is the proper way to present your rifle on target. Go over all those things with them. And if you don't know, maybe you should both go to a class together. There's a bunch of great trainers, a bunch of great classes in this country. Go take one. Because to have the gear means nothing if you don't know how to use it. Contact some of these great manufacturers. Obviously, you can see from our 300 subscribers, we are not sponsored. I'm a big fan of these Dayton plates. They are 0.75 thick and they're 1.3 pounds. These plates weigh nothing. Now they're not rated for 30-06, obviously not rated for 50 BMG, 338 Lapua, but they are rated for 556, they're rated for 762 by 39. So let's think of the scenario. We're gonna have to cover some ground with these plate carriers on. So to have a 15, a pair of 15 pound plates in a plate carrier with our ammo, and we can only go a quarter mile before we collapse, that's not the right setup for us. Gear yourself up with the best gear that still allows you to move. We're all different rate ages, we're all different abilities, right? So what works for one guy isn't gonna work for another guy. Um, with your handguns, make sure it's reliability. With any of your weapon systems, your checklist should be this. A, is it reliable? That means every time I pull the trigger, is this gun gonna go bang? If you can check that box, now we can move down the line. Is it accurate? Yes, it goes bang, yes, it's accurate. Check that box. 
Okay, what's the next thing on the list? We can start talking about ergonomics and, and how modular it is, what we can attach and not attach. But those are down the list, right? Reliability, accuracy, one and two. We can start talking about ergonomics. How does it fit our hand? Do we like the looks of it? Um, and then don't get carried away putting too much crap on your gun that's just gonna make it heavier and not make it any more reliable. Let's not forget, the crazy Germans at Glock are super smart guys and they've done a ton of testing. So there's a ton of parts you can shove inside your Glock, but is it gonna make it more reliable? Is it gonna make it more accurate? If the answer is no to those, maybe you should stick with that crappy old spongy Glock trigger and just learn how to shoot with it. Um, the biggest message is be good to each other, take care of each other, love each other, and don't let the forces trying to divide this country divide us as a gun community. That's the last thing we need. We don't need to be judging and snickering at someone because they didn't do it the right way. We need to be going over there and saying, hey, let's get you squared away. Let's, let's help you get this figured out. Because that person may be the person that you're back to back with duking it out in the zombie invasion and you'd be wanting them to be squared away. So make sure you spend the time to do that. And if you're a person just getting into it, be responsible. Don't go strolling down Main Street with your plate carrier on, waving your AR-15 around, drawing a bunch of negative attention, right? You, as a gun owner, are a representative of this community and you need to do it the right way, right? And how do we do that? A lot of that comes down to not ostracizing people doing it wrong, but instead reaching out to them and helping them do it right. Um, care about each other. Uh, watch us for more stuff. If you want to learn, if, you, if you've got some ideas, post down below. I'd love to hear them. If you've got your gear set up, kind of what you run, I'd love to see it because I'm always working to improve myself. I have the rare opportunity to work on a, on a range where we train some of the best operators in the country and in the world for that matter. Got a little Norway representation going on on this shirt today. I just realized that. So had those guys over here and they are really squared away. Their manipulations are dirty, but, but help each other out and learn from each other and be willing to learn. And then let's just get better together. And when the time comes, if we need to have each other's back, have each other's back. But that starts from just support right now. And we might not be called on to do anything drastic. This stuff might just sit around and gather dust and we never get it, we never have to use it, get to use it. I'm disappointed there's not a zombie invasion. Um, we might not get to use it, but there are tons of things we can do every day. We can help check on the elderly neighbors down the street. We can push somebody's car who's out of gas to the gas station. We can maybe help that neighbor kid who lives in an abusive household or just doesn't have any opportunities, invite him along on a family camping trip and just be better people. All right, you guys, take care. We'll talk to you later. Um, I hope some of this helped, but I'd love to hear your ideas. Let me know. Thanks.